A big difference between selective black holing and classic black holing, which in most networks is implemented as the 666 community, is that with classic black holing you throw away both legitimate traffic and also the DDoS attack. So you sacrifice any revenue generated by the victim IP address in order to uh, prevent congestion of your upstreams. With selective black holing, however, you can strategically choose uh, which regions of the world no longer can reach the victim IP address and which regions can reach the IP address. In other words, it's fair to assume that a Japanese webshop owner cares most about Japanese eyeballs and when he's under attack he would sacrifice, for instance, that European people can access his webshop so that the Japanese eyeballs can still get to the website. Classic black holing is an all or nothing proposition and with selective black holing we add more uh, granularity to the choices you make in terms of unreachability versus congestion of your uplinks. Implementing selective black holing I consider an uh, advanced routing policy and it takes uh, some time and tinkering to modify your network to support selective black holing as a carrier. But fortunately enough, uh, for end users that want to use selective black holing, it's rather straightforward and it is almost the same as using classic black hole communities. Uh, and you just replace the classic black hole community with a selective black hole community. Currently there are two networks on the planet that offer selective black holing, but I hope that after my Apricot presentation there will be more networks that offer this to their customers because I think it benefits uh, everybody involved and that's why it's worth sharing.